Hello everyone, today is Friday, July 2nd, 2020. My name is Evan and welcome back to another market recap video. We break these videos up into two parts. In the first part, we're gonna talk about everything that went on this week in markets. And uh, we have stocks closed tomorrow, stock market closed tomorrow for the 4th of July Independence Day holiday. So before I forget, I hope everyone has uh, a wonderful, safe and healthy long weekend and gets to enjoy some time off away from screens, hopefully some outdoor time, uh, maybe fire up those barbecues and uh, enjoys the day. So um, in part one, we're going to look at everything that went on this week in markets uh, from performance to sectors, volatility uh, and so forth, pick apart everything uh, that stands out and that was notable on the week. And then in part two of this video, we're gonna jump into the charts. We're gonna put everything into context and look at those longer term trends, try and make sense of how this week's action fits into the bigger picture. So hopefully that sounds good. Let's dive right into it here uh, with some of the headlines or some of the takeaways from this week. Quarter two officially wrapped up this week in the history books and it was a very strong quarter uh, going back um, 10, 20, 30 years maybe almost. Uh, I don't know if it went back to as high as uh, as far as 1987 in terms of one of the strongest quarters. Depends what index you're looking at but it was a very strong um, two and a half months for the market. 4% uh, up week for equities this week. There was no bearish initial downside follow through and the VIX is back under 30. So we're gonna talk about all of that throughout this video. Let's first kick it off with some equity market performance. If we look here at the right hand column, uh, the one week performance, basically again across the board, 4% uh, percent or so for uh, the NASDAQ, the Russell and the S&P. World stocks minus US, a uh, little bit of a laggard here, up uh, almost 3%, but a little bit shy from uh, what the strength was in the United States, the NASDAQ clear outperformer here up 5% on the week. Now, if we look at market internals uh, and we try and see if we have support here, I think the answer is yes. Uh, we saw a good healthy dose of uh, stocks both advancing on the week, which is the second row here, uh, 3,348 net advancers this week uh, in aggregate. And in terms of number of 52 week highs, we saw those numbers start to inch back up. Remember last week, if you recall from our video, we started to see these numbers dry up a little bit and get close to zero. Uh, that was a little bit of a warning sign. We wanted to pay attention to that trend and it does seem to have uh, bounced back uh, pretty strong Strongly. Again, we would love to see these numbers get even higher, triple digits uh, preferred for the strongest of markets, but uh, we'll take it one step at a time now. Uh, we'll deal with this uh, 40 to 50 number, 200 net highs in aggregate on the week. Uh, if we look at the percentage of stocks uh, above their 20 period simple moving average. We started the week, remember last week was a rough week for the stock market. Uh, we basically sold off and and, and had uh, pretty turbulent times across the board, uh, minus maybe technology stocks. Uh, we had about 17% of stocks on Monday above the 20 SMA. We finished the week with about 45%. So a nice little rise there and kind of sitting in the middle of the range. If we look at sectors this week that were um, outperforming uh, again if we focus our attention on this right hand column here where we sort the one week performance uh, from strongest down to the weakest uh, we saw at the upside here we saw real estate materials and communication services were the top performing sectors uh, followed by utilities here so a uh, pretty interesting mix a different kind of grouping of stocks there uh, that we saw at the top of the list and on the downside uh, we saw financials energy and consumer staples, all of those sectors still positive, two to 3%, but on a relative strength basis, they were on uh, the bottom of the pile. Now, volatility had um, a, a good week, if you're, if you're a bull, um, in the sense of good being that the volatility complex here kind of came down right across the curve. You can see uh, last week we had about a 32 VIX. Uh, this week we, we closed with about 27. So we lost um, you know, almost five points there. Uh, saw a nice drop in the front month. And even going out to the three, six and one year mark, all of that 
ended up coming out of the market and unwinding a little bit. So it was a uh, constructive week or supportive week again for stocks with VIX coming back down and equity markets rallying. Credit markets uh, really nothing um you know nothing standing out here basically had a strong week as well investment grade high yield both having a nice positive week uh nothing uh new here or any information really to glean from that uh interest rates and commodities uh really not much change here in terms of yields this week it was a pretty steady week i mean four or five percent on the 10 and 30 year but given the volatility recently uh, these have been moving a lot more so um, didn't see much movement here especially for a four percent equity rally uh, gold actually still held in there silver held in there crude oil held in there so the commodity complex uh, doing pretty well in general uh, we don't show ags here or anything outside of uh, gold and oil really and silver but uh, maybe we'll include those in some of the future uh, stock market uh, recaps. So basically when we put it all together here, it was a pretty constructive week. Uh, we had three out of five of our um, strong marks here on our report card. Risk sectors outperforming, got a little bit of a penalty box here. It was a close one, but uh, we did see some safety kind of holding up there with utilities. Um, and staples uh, you know putting in a, a good performance um, on a relative basis and the volatility environment still a little bit of a lag error so all in all uh, give this week's performance a B um, it was a good rally there was some good market internals but uh, we got a couple of um, uh, warning signs there or some things that we want to be a little bit cautious about now as we've been wrapping up here in our first part with uh, our own sort of investment strategy uh, Merlin uh, this is the current allocation now you guys have been interested in uh, kind of keeping up to date with what it's doing. Uh, so basically what you see is we get about a 74% cash position now. So that actually increased this week. Uh, so we actually, um, you know, increased the amount of cash uh, that we have on hand this week. And that was because uh, we hit a lot of profit targets. We had um, several profit targets being hit this week. Uh, so we actually took positions off. We booked gains into some uh, of uh, the strong uh, winners that we had. We did have one exit for a loss as well. So I think we had um, basically four positions either being trimmed or outright exited. Um, so that's why you saw the cash position go up uh, as we lock in gains and there really just hasn't been a whole lot of um, new uh, what we consider low risk opportunity uh, to put that to work at this time. So that is the current positioning right there, 75 call it percent cash. Uh, and that's what we got going into uh, Monday. So that wraps up part one. Let's jump back in here in just a minute with our charts. All right, we're back here. We got Warden TC2000 open. We have our equity market grid that we are looking at. We have our smart trend filters applied, which are those colored dots, uh, basically a, um, you know, intuitive way to uh, decipher the trend of the market across various time frames using uh, price and volume and some price action relationships to paint the colors of these dots. We'll link up uh, in the top right now a page where you can learn more about the smart trend filters and the white dashed lines on each of these charts is price itself. So we are looking at a weekly time frame. If we start in the top left here, basically nothing changed uh, this week in terms of the longer term outlook and our trend. You can see we've been in bullish trend here since uh, the final week of May. So you're basically talking about a month and a half or so where we've had uh, a bullish trend outlook here for the S&P 500 with a 4% rally we saw this week. Nothing changes, although notice the slope of um, these trend filters here are uh, very stagnant, very sideways, which suggests basically that um, it is a weak trend at this time. If we look at the NASDAQ 100, lots of strength here. You can see it was up 5% this week. Uh, we've had bullish trend here now for uh, two months and uh, the vertical slope of this trend filter is uh, got much more urgency behind it, shows that the trend is just much stronger here. And that shouldn't be a surprise uh, unless you're living under a hole or uh, haven't been paying attention to the market or watching our recap videos, the NASDAQ has been uh, the clear outperformer here 
for uh, many months now. Bottom left is Russell, nothing changed here as well. Gradual trend filter, but still bullish. And in the bottom right, we have international stocks, which again, uh, gradual, uh, even declining slope a little bit, but uh, regardless, it is still bullish as well. So no new changes there. Uh, the daily chart though, is where we have a, a bit more noise. So if we look at the S&P 500 on the daily time frame, look at the fluctuations in here and a little bit of a whipsaw. And you know the thing that uh, I really like about the Smart Trend filters is that uh, they, they do tend to do a pretty good job at reducing the whipsaw, uh, although it's certainly not immune to it because you can get signals like we saw last Friday where we had this bearish transition down. Uh, we had continuation on Monday, but then Tuesday this week, we talked about it in our midweek video, we went back to neutral or uh, transition mode. And that stayed for another day and then we went bullish here on Thursday. So a little bit of of um, you know, basically some sideways chop here, interfering a little bit with uh, direction with our uh, trend filter. But regardless here, when we look a little bit at the price action, of the S&P 500 in just a moment, you'll notice that we still haven't made a meaningful price breakout. So we are still, when we combine this view with some price action analysis, can see that we're still very much range bound here uh, in the S&P 500. Most of these markets, um, except for you know maybe the NASDAQ, which uh, again, if we look at the right here, this never went bearish. It just, uh, you know, it paused. It went transition here a little bit last week, but now it's back to bullish signal uh, and and, thing look, and, and life looks good here for the NASDAQ. Bottom left is Russell. You can see again, we had those two bars printing of that bearish turndown, uh, which ultimately went neutral for the rest of this week. Notice we're not getting a green signal here um, like we are in the S&P 500. We're just seeing sideways trend and chop. Uh, that's currently the positioning for the Russell 2000. And international stocks, uh, we had three, period, three days of um, of uh, bearish uh, tr uh, transition or signal here uh, that turned up on Thursday with a nice performance that the international stocks put in on Thursday to finish out the week. And uh, we can see we're back into yellow right now for that market. So if we get to some of the uh, price action analysis here and we just pull up this view, which is what we've been looking at for the S&P 500, you'll notice once again here, um, well, even before I talk about today's action, if we talk about how the market came into this week, it was on this bar right here. So uh, frankly, you know, if we talk about how the market, you know, started or finished off last week, it was this it was this red sell off here, two and a half percent down in the S&P 500, kind of coming into this 3000 level, uh, just under 3000 is what we had sort of identified as the lower end of this range. And basically on Monday of this week, that lower end of the range had we saw basically buyers step right in immediately. We undercut Friday's lows just briefly, but then basically uh, reversed close strongly on the session, got follow through, got follow through, and got follow through with a little bit of uh, a reversal here late in the session on Thursday. So essentially we climbed from the lower end of the range of support that held again, and we rallied all the way back up to the top end of the range this week. And it looks like uh, certainly based on this candle here that printed on Thursday that we got a more rejection uh, at this 3140 level, which has been rejected now three or well, four times if you count today, uh, but three times in the past couple of weeks up at this area. And if you recall, this is where this island reversal top started way back here uh, at the beginning of the month of June. So that's still really kind of holding the market in place here and um, acting as resistance, this 3140 to 3150 line. We've rejected it here on Thursday. Man, it, we still managed to close higher on Thursday. We were up 45 basis points, but still well off of the highs of the session. And now you have to ask yourself, well, if we're still in a range bound market, if we're still failing at resistance, uh, then you know the move is back down into this range as we wait for some type of confirmation uh, of, of a breakout or a breakdown. Uh, right now, 3140, you could call it 3150, you could call it today's highs on Thursday. 
that's effectively the area you want to see taken out to the upside. You want to see bulls get above and start accepting prices over 3140 to give you confirmation, to give you momentum that this market can indeed rally out of this range until and if that happens, you have to be a little bit cautious here. Uh, certainly you could pick your spots, um, but you want to be a little bit um, you know, conservative if you're a short-term trader just until you get that uh, confirmation that we can start to break above this level that is repeatedly failed over the past month or so. So the S&P 500 uh, above basically you know, today's uh, open or today's highs is what I'd be paying attention to. There's room all the way down to 3,000 or so. That's basically the lower end of support. Lots of noise and chop inside of this range. So that's what we're dealing with heading into next week. If we look at the Russell 2000, you can see that this picture here is very similar. The levels are a little bit different and you could argue, um, yeah, maybe a little bit more bearish than the S&P 500, just in terms of relation as to where it is relative to uh, the early June highs. But basically this 144 to 145 area, uh, that's still been the resistance zone. And this is an area that we've been talking about. These aren't new levels that are on our charts suddenly. These are levels that uh, we've essentially been talking about the last few videos. And um, that's that's been the action area we've wanted to pay attention to. And again, it, it just really kind of um, you know took its grip on the market today again, uh, as we opened up into resistance and we effectively failed closed at the lows of the session. Again, the Russell 2000 was still up 40 basis points on Thursday, uh, but certainly the very weak close here two days in a row uh, doesn't exactly bode uh, so hot in the very short term. So the Russell 2000 faces the same problem as the S&P. It's basically sideways here in the short term, and it's kind of making up its mind with risk uh, to fall back down into this range. Now the NASDAQ 100 is, is a different story as it's been marching to its own beat for the past few months now. You can see it is closing and trading at all time highs. It did have a lousy uh, session here on Thursday as well. It didn't it didn't hold uh, the highs of the session and it did close near the lows of the session. It was still up 68 basis points and it is a new all time closing high. So once again here for the NASDAQ, um, short term some concern but longer term broader picture here this just continues to be relentlessly um you know performing uh you know it has these sharp one two day uh shakeouts interspersed inside of a of a mostly sideways and grinding higher of of a trend so the cues uh still the market leader i think you get some concern you know really i had um this 246 was the relevant level and i still think that's an interesting level um kind of in the short term you could notch this up to about 250 just over the 250 which would get you where the market topped out here on 623 it would get you on Wednesday's highs if we start failing below 250 it'd be a really early warning signal that um, again you could just see a bigger pullback or there's some exhaustion here again none of these signals um, have really materialized and really you know all you have to think about or look at again is our simple trend filter here and it's just been nothing but green dots and occasionally some yellow here but basically it's been saying for the most part kind of stay the course and this is where uh, the strong trend continues to be so that's the price action kind of lay of the land there for the major markets let's jump into some of the others uh, if we look at credit again we talked about LQD JNK at the beginning in part one uh, both of those having good performing weeks uh, the junk uh, high yield bond market still a little bit of a concern here it still hasn't transitioned up there's still um you know there's still not enough momentum uh in the jnk etf there so we should pay attention to it of course we know the feds involved in that market as well um but uh well certainly they're involved in the lqd i think they're involved in the jnk as well uh regardless though we're still seeing transition there if we look in the bottom left again these are weekly time frames you can see vix uh even though vix came all the way down it's down 20 percent this week notice our uh our, our smart trend filter here on the weekly chart still holding on to that yellow uh trend 
transition mode here. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we haven't seen the VIX totally roll over just, just yet on this time frame. And then we can see TLT in the bottom right going bullish trend on the weekly pictures. If we bring everything down to the daily chart, uh, we have similar stories in credit, uh, basically bullish in LQD, uh, neutral here in JNK. If we look at the VIX, uh, this was enough to turn the daily VIX signaling back, back down to bearish uh, based on the 3% uh, down move it saw on Thursday. Uh, so we'll see if that can persist. But right now, VIX looks like to be in a sell signal right now. And in the TLT, we are in a bullish mode on the daily chart. Now, if we get into commodities here, we look at gold. Again, bullish trend, bullish trend silver, bearish trend USO, neutral commodities. Nothing changed here. This is the same kind of uh, positioning we had last week. If we look at the daily chart of all of these, these are pretty much the same as well. Gold's basically been bullish. Same thing with silver, a little bit of transition mixed in. Uh, USO went back to bullish trend on the daily. Uh, and then commodities, again, going back into bullish trend as well. So really not a whole lot of change uh, when you think about this screen here and those um asset classes. Now, if we look at sector ETFs, um, really going to kind of just move right down to the daily chart here. And uh, there were a lot of, of, of changes this week. Um, and remember last week, we had we had a lot of bearish developments. And, and a lot of those things started to flip this week back into at least neutral. So something like XLC, which you see here in the middle of the chart, uh, top middle, um, you can see that moved back up to neutral. You can see consumer discretionary actually got a buy signal here. So it went from bearish to neutral back into bullish uh, all here this week. So that change took place. We saw real estate move back up to neutral. We saw industrials move back up to neutral. Materials move back up into neutral. Healthcare move into a buy state again uh, after being uh, bearish and then neutral. So lots of changes. And uh, we talked about some of these things happening in our midweek video. In the short term, trends can move very fast, and uh, we are certainly seeing that this week. So let's finish things off looking at some individual price action. Uh, basically, uh, I want to talk first about VIX, or at least just show the VIX. Um, if we go down to volatility here, you can see it's back below 30, uh, and it closed uh, certainly off of the lows of the session, uh, but around 27, the upper 20s. It's basically been uh, where the VIX has found uh, some stabilization here since the beginning of May. Uh, in this upper 20s area, this is even despite the nice rally we've seen across the equity market, this is where the VIX has stubbornly been staying. We'll see if this time is different, but for now, uh, you've basically been paid to, to sort of be a buyer here, even though they've been temporary buys, uh, but you've basically been paid to be putting on insurance or being a buyer here in the uh, mid to upper 20s in VIX. So we'll see again um, how that shakes out next week. Uh, XLE, this is uh, one that looks still concerning here. So if we look at some of the bearish areas of the market, energy uh, looks a little sloppy. I mean, it, you know, it has obviously the potential to hold in here, and certainly the bull case is going to want to see this hold in around 36. There's a lot of prior supply in here that traded and acted as support in May. Uh, but basically, you know, we, we didn't get any type of bounce here this week, uh, even though USO did see a little bit of a, of a move higher this week and as the commodity goes. Uh, XLE, the energy stocks, really didn't see a whole lot. So uh, this looks a bit heavy here. If it starts breaking below 36, it'd be a concern for the space. Uh, financials as well in a very similar situation. Basically, you didn't really get to enjoy much of a bounce here this week. Uh, we we kind of hit down into this $20 three dollar area support which has some prior history and then you can see it's basically you know very weak here and looks kind of heavy so uh, almost like a little bear flag so if this starts rolling over from um, you know the, the mid to upper 22s I would be concerned here and uh, on the bullish side is, is something like healthcare which uh, did come back down to the lower end of the range but it did hold and start to rally back up uh, into the upper end of the range this consolidation has been taking place for quite some time now a couple of months so uh, we're still interested in seeing how this ends up shaking out don't really have a definitive uh, answer just yet uh, but like the hold here at the bottom end of the range and the rally towards the top and we can see if the bulls can continue with that uh, next week. So that, uh, I think, covers everything that I wanted to say. Uh, basically, you have um, still a mostly range-bound market um, in, in most individual uh, stocks and, and, and sectors. 
and indices, the NASDAQ technology, you know, still kind of sits by itself kind of alone in, in the um, doing something different camp where it is in an uptrend uh, with momentum behind it. But basically the rest of the market is mostly range bound. And um, we'll see what happens with some of these daily closes that we saw, uh, like in the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000, uh, which rejected today's highs at resistance. We'll see if the sellers can get any follow through into next week. So that is it for me. Thanks as always uh, for tuning in. Every Friday we do uh, our long form recap videos just like this. Uh, in case there's a holiday, it'll come out earlier on Thursday uh, like today. But hopefully you're, you're, you can enjoy uh, the extra day off. And uh, as always, I appreciate uh, everyone tuning in and listening and, and um and uh, um, enjoying these videos. So uh, have a good weekend and we'll see you back here next week.